Well, welcome to the 700 Club. For today's headlines, let's go over to the CBN News Desk. Gordon, it's been one week since the massive EF5 tornado ripped through Joplin, Missouri. As search and rescue efforts continue, residents there pause to honor those who suffered so much loss. John Jessup has the story. After a long week of grieving, cleaning up, and seeing devastation at every turn, the city of Joplin, Missouri took a break from it all. This is just not your tragedy. Uh, this is a national tragedy and that means there will be a national response. Touring the devastation and consoling the locals, President Obama offered hope and pledged support as the city rebuilds. I can promise you, your country will be there with you every single step of the way. All across town, residents pack the pews, even in places where church buildings no longer stand. The church is not the building, you know, we are, the church is the body of the people who are here to worship. People here have been turning to each other for help, but relying on faith for assurance that healing and peace will come. I don't know whether you can get through this without faith. I don't know whether you can get through anything without faith. That's one thing we all have to know that we cannot give up and that God is with us all the time. John Jessup, CBN News. First Lady Michelle Obama encourages churches now to help make a difference in the lives of military families this Memorial Day. Mrs. Obama sent this video to churches over the holiday weekend. She encourages congregations to minister to military families. You could partner with an existing program or ministry that serves military families. Or you can use your respected voices to shine a light on the sacrifices and contributions these families are making. And she says that uh, helping can be as simple as raking leaves or offering to babysit for a military family with a loved one deployed. Sarah Palin kicks off a nationwide bus tour. Many wonder if it's the beginning of a bid for the White House. Palin started the tour Sunday by riding on the back of a motorcycle during an annual Memorial Day rally in Washington, D.C. The bus tour will take Palin up the East Coast to New Hampshire, the first primary state. Palin says she does not know, though, if she will run just yet. Now let's go back over to Terry. Well, coming up, a freak accident smashed one man's car and his bank account. The next thing I know is they're going to turn me into the attorney general to force me to pay a hospital bill that's well over $200,000. You'll see how he got out of debt right after this. Coming up later. That was the worst storm I'd seen. Alone. I knew then I was really in trouble and lost at sea. I lost all electrical power on board. The engine would not start. One sailor battles the ocean. Seeing waves that I was convinced were 50 foot waves. In the fight of his life, I knew that I was going to die there. What makes the miracles of Jesus even more miraculous? Standing where they happened in Israel. Come explore Jerusalem where Jesus opened blind eyes. Visit the hills of Galilee where Jesus fed the multitude. Stroll through Capernaum where Jesus lived and taught and healed. To learn more about standing where it all happened in Israel, visit www.goisrael.com. Come visit Israel. Today, Stuart Top owns a thriving home repair business. But just a few years ago, he was more than $200,000 in debt and about to file bankruptcy. Here's what stopped him. When Stuart Top had a serious car accident, both his health and his finances took a hit. He was in the hospital for 21 days, uh, had broken ribs, broken everything. Um, when I got out of the hospital, I had no way to generate any income. Up until his accident, Stewart had been doing extremely well with his Maui-based high-end renovation company. Now he was $10,000 behind with company rent payments and unsure of the future of his business. I couldn't work for many months. Then there were the unpaid bills from his accident. It got real stressful. And the next thing I know is they're going to turn me into the attorney general to force me to pay a hospital bill that's well over $200,000. Yeah. 
Meanwhile, Stewart saw Pat Robertson on the 700 Club teaching about the value of giving. I understood the principle. I didn't know if it'd work. And I watched all the different things that, that CBN is doing worldwide, and I thought, man, I really want to become part of this. He took a step of faith and became a 2500 Club member. When I decided to do that, a, a series of things happened. Uh, the people I rent from called me up one day and just said, we're forgiving your rent. And I just went, what? Then an insurance carrier paid his medical bills. On top of that, the work started pouring in. All of a sudden, these jobs that I, I was hoping to get, I was getting big jobs, profitable jobs. Later, Stewart married Michelle, who had been a CBN partner for years. She introduced Stewart to principles she had learned from Pat Robertson's book, The Secret Kingdom. The law of reciprocity combined with the law of use, you don't give up, you keep going, that's the law of perseverance, took me from not knowing anything in life and not having anything in life to being very blessed spiritually, financially. Together, the tops became CBN founders, and now even their gifts to each other reflect their desire to give to others. Her birthday, I gave her a water well, and for my birthday, she gave me a water well. I mean, what else is better than that? Stuart and Michelle challenge others to test God when it comes to their finances. Anybody can make an excuse not to give. It's a choice, and it's something that should be done based on faith. Don't worry about anybody else what they think. They'll all tell you that it's, you're wasting your money, you're wasting your time. I can tell you right now, you're not wasting either. The Lord is with me. He's with my wife. We have a wonderful life. We're doing well, and it's all because of the Lord. And if you don't tithe, you'll never understand that. It's the only time we get to test God. It's, a, it's in our tithes and offerings where he actually challenges us and says, prove me. Here it is from Malachi chapter 3, verses 10 through 11. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house, and prove me now in this, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing, that there will not be room enough to receive it. We normally stop there, but it goes on, and, and the going on is really important. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes, so that he will not destroy the fruit of your ground nor shall the vine fail to bear fruit for you in the field. Now, this is really important for us uh, these days, that you know, it, it's not just that he promises to open up the windows of heaven and pour out blessing, but he promises the things that take away, he'll rebuke that. You know, sometimes you, you, you watch people tithe and their income goes up, uh, but sometimes you watch people tithe and there's no change in income and they don't have any explanation other than, well, we, our expenses went down. The devourer got rebuked. The thing that started to take away from us with that wonderful couple here, they were $200,000 in debt, and it goes away. It goes away. God did that for them. What will he do for you? You know, just start thinking about what, what can God do for me? Well, he can do a lot. And all he's saying is prove me, test me, try this and see if it'll work for others. What he's done for others, he will do for you. So today, this week, this month, say, I'm gonna start tithing. I'm gonna start giving. I'm gonna see what God can do. I'm gonna prove him now in this. Terry? A few years ago, the two children in this next story lost everything, their parents, their home, and their friends. In fact, they weren't even welcome on the streets of their own city until they found a home with CBN's Orphan's Promise. Shintu and his sister Rekha lived on the outskirts of Delhi, India. Even though they were healthy, most people didn't go anywhere near them because their parents are lepers. People outside would say, don't go to their house or you'll become like them. Our father would work in the field and drive a rickshaw. But after he lost some of his fingers and toes, it was hard for him to work. I used to think my father puts himself through so much pain in order to take care of us. 
When there was barely enough food to eat, their parents had no other choice but to take them to a children's home, sponsored by Orphan's Promise. It was the last time the children would ever see them. But it was the first time Shinto and Rekka felt accepted by others. When we came here, we were given everything. We got beds and a nice house with electricity. I liked having something to eat. I liked pizza and fish. And they were finally able to get a good education. I liked riding on the school bus. Now, nobody teases us. And they soon learned about Jesus Christ. They told me Jesus is the one true God who died and rose on the third day. I started believing in God and he showed me how to be a good boy. One day, as I was walking towards a church altar, I heard Jesus say to me, My child, don't cry. That's when I started to believe in Jesus. Now Shintu and Rekka want to use what they've learned to help others. When I grow up, I want to become a preacher and teach others to share because when someone doesn't have anything, people need to help. I love Jesus very much. I'm not hungry anymore. I get everything I need and everybody shows me love. I want to thank Orphan's Promise. They took good care of us and helped us when we didn't have anything. You know, if you're an untouchable in India, the option of dreaming about your future doesn't exist. In the lives of these children, they now have food on the table every day, an education being provided for them, and hope for their future. It's a whole new life. It's fascinating to me to see how amazingly these children grasp hold of the love of God. They've never known anything like that. Those comments are not things that have been programmed into them. They come from their hearts. They see that God loves them and that he has a plan and a purpose for their lives. You're helping us do that if you're a member of the 700 Club because Orphan's Promise is a part of CBN World Reach. And we're reaching out to orphans and vulnerable children around the world with that incredibly freeing message. God loves you. He wants a relationship with you and he has a plan and purpose for your life. Help us take that message to the lost children of the world, those who have no voice. Join the 700 Club today. It's 65 cents a day, $20 a month, but it makes you a world changer. You do it by going to your phone and calling that toll-free number that's on your screen. It's 1-800-759-0700. When you call, will you say, I'd like to join the 700 Club and I'd like to do it through Pledge Express. That's electronic monthly giving. It means your bank does all the work, but it saves a lot of administrative costs on our end, so much so that we're able to say thank you for doing that by sending you Power for Life teachings each month. These are corporate teachings that we have here from Pat and Gordon, and we'd love to share them with you on a regular basis. So call now, 1-800-759-0700. You can also join us by logging on to CBN.com. Gordon? Well, up next, a desperate man calls home. Mom, I said, I'm in Savannah, and I'm not really asking for any money, but I said, Mom, I'm hungry, and I haven't eaten in days. And I just asked, could you bring me a sandwich or something? Click. And Mom hung up the phone. Find out who he calls on next, right after this. I came a slave to it. It got really, really addictive for me. I say, God, you have to deliver me out of this. Of that woman of God laid her hands on me. My God instantly delivered. I didn't have any more feeling to smoke, to use crack cocaine. I didn't want any of that anymore. And if he could change me, he could change anyone. If you have diabetes and you're on Medicare, call now for a new pain-free meter. These new meters are more accurate, they're easier to use, and the best news is you don't have to prick your fingers anymore. Call now and Arriva Medical will send you one of these new meters for free. And if you have Medicare, your testing supplies may also be covered. Arriva makes it simple. 
They bill Medicare directly. There are no upfront costs. And they deliver your supplies right to your door for free. With these new meters, there's no coding. You don't have to prick your fingers. And some of these meters even talk. Your blood glucose reading is 122. Call 1 800 284 4105 and we'll send you a free Betty Crocker Diabetes Cookbook filled with delicious recipes. 1 800 284 4105. Call Ariva today. You'd be glad you did. As a small business owner, Michael Moore worked round the clock. That way of life cost him his family. Later, Michael discovered crack cocaine, and that addiction cost him everything else. When your father tells you that you'll never amount to anything, you begin to believe it. I was never quite enough to measure up, and I never quite knew how to, um, to please Dad, to make him proud of, of who I was, and, you know, and just really see him enjoy life a little bit. I kind of felt a responsibility for his anger, like perhaps it was some of my own actions or something that, uh, you know, that I was doing wrong. In his teens, Michael Moore escaped his feelings of inadequacy with marijuana and alcohol. It gave me a sort of a momentary sense of euphoria. You know, like nothing else really mattered as long as I, you know, was numb to my environment. And In high school, his drug use got worse, and so did his relationship with his dad. When Michael was caught stealing a purse from a car, his father snapped. Just started beating me and, you know, kicking me around and, and uh, really just bashing me with his words, telling me I'd never amount to anything. Uh, it was just, it was a pretty traumatizing experience, you know, really kind of felt like whatever chance dad and I had of bonding was probably broke from that incident. You know, just, it hurt. It, it really hurt. Yeah, from that point on, alcohol was almost an every day, if not every other day, thing. He graduated from high school and landed a lucrative job as a surveyor. Now, everything looked good from the outside. I had, you know, most of the things that a young man would desire. And I've been inside, man, I was just a wreck. You know, it was complete turmoil. The more things I purchased and the more I tried to satisfy myself, the deeper the desire was to just intoxicate myself, self-medicate. In his 20s, Michael married and started a family. He owned a successful surveying company, but the pressures that came with it were unmanageable. I didn't know how to process emotions. Drugs and alcohol became my only way to step away from that career, that job that was literally consuming me. And I was working, you know, 18 hours a day most of the time. And I was just striving for the, you know, for the money and I was going for the gusto, but I wasn't showing my kids and my family the love that they needed. The final blow came when his wife had an affair and then divorced him. He was left all alone in their large house. When his mother invited him to church, Michael accepted just to escape the loneliness he lived with every day. And every word that he spoke was a picture of my life. And literally, it broke me down. It broke me down into tears. And uh, so when the altar call came for salvation, you know, I was right there. And uh, so I came up, received prayer, but I wasn't ready to surrender. I was still striving to, to just accomplish things on my own, in my own power, you know. Up until that point, my whole life had been me, 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 and look at all of my accomplishments. Michael threw himself into building the life he had strived so many years for. He found a new way to keep him going. Cocaine was the fuel that allowed me to stay up and work all night. And then, you know, it was literally a couple years of that cocaine use and living like that and just, you know, killing myself literally that I got introduced to crack. And then that's when things went straight downhill to the point where, you know, that's all I cared about. That's all I thought about. You know, the high from crack cocaine literally lasts just a few seconds, you know? We give all that, we just surrender all that for just that few seconds of euphoria, and then it's gone. And then it's just working, uh, manipulating, lying, cheating, stealing, whatever it takes to get that next few seconds. And uh, it's really just an awful lifestyle. I mean, it's horrible. He lost everything he owned and became homeless. I'd work a position for a couple of weeks just long enough to get a paycheck. And as soon as I get that paycheck, then I would be off on another tangent. I'd buy as much crack as I could with that amount of money, leave myself enough money for a room, and then literally lock myself in a hotel room for seven days at a time. Smoking crack around the clock until I had spent every single last dollar. And then we'd be back on the street again. 
For years, Michael lived in crack houses, homeless shelters, and motel rooms. One night, he was tired and hungry and called his mom for help. You know, mom had been so used to me calling and begging for money, but I said, Mom, I said, I'm in Savannah, and I'm not really asking for any money, but I said, Mom, I'm hungry, and I haven't eaten in days. And I just asked, could you bring me a sandwich or something? Click. And Mom hung up the phone. And uh, it was right then that I realized, man, I am a wreck. I need some help. Man, there's no way that I can do this on my own. I cannot pull myself out of this. I need help. While lying on the floor at a homeless shelter, Michael opened a Bible, and his eyes landed on a verse that changed his life. But I, I needed God at that point, and I knew that I needed him. When I came to Proverbs 3, 5 and 6, God said to me this. He said, if you'll trust me with all your heart and not depend on your own understanding and seek my will in all you do, I will direct your paths. And for the first time in my life, God had spoke to me. The Bible became alive. God was realer to me at that moment than anything. And he said, I will direct your paths. And uh, my life had been a series of dead end roads, you know, at that point. And uh, man, I needed that. I needed someone to direct my paths. And he just said, simply trust me. Michael gave his life to Jesus Christ. He joined an eight month recovery and discipleship program with Savannah Mission Bible Training Center. That's where I was able to just get into the Word of God and just find out who He is, how He thinks about me, what He expects from us, and just literally realize that He is a loving God and He's full of grace. Just having that relationship with our Father and knowing that He's pleased with you despite your actions, that He's proud of you regardless of what your past looks like. Michael was set free from his addiction to crack. He reconciled with his father and shared with him the love of God that has given him peace. I had what I needed. You know, what I had been created for and searching for my whole life now was with me. And I found that comfort that I'd always been searching for in that personal relationship with God. And you can try and try and try to clean up your act on your own and you can do everything you can, you know, on your own power. But the only way you're gonna overcome in this world is by accepting Jesus and receiving that love that he has for you. You know, Michael's mother did a great favor to him that day by not being there for him, by not picking him up one more time, because it caused him to come to the end of himself. It caused him to come to the place where he said, I can't do this anymore. There's no way I can get out of this on my own. Do you know that's where we all are? You might not be a crack addict, but there's no way that we can get out of the mess of our own lives by ourselves. The mess of the choices that we've made, the mess of the way that we think of our heart attitude about things, the mess of wrong choices that we're very, very aware of. Maybe you are an addict. Maybe it's not to crack, maybe it's to something else. The point is, we can't get out of it on our own. We can't get out of it on our own. And it's a good place to be. To come to the end of yourself is to come to the beginning of life in Jesus Christ. You see, when we talk about a surrendered life, that's what we mean. Michael talked about the fact that there was a point in his life where he accepted Jesus as his Savior, but he wasn't ready to surrender his life to him as Lord. Maybe that's you today. Maybe you have a lot of head knowledge. Maybe you've even gone forward to the altar at church, committed your life to Jesus, and then walked away and tried to live it on your own didn't work, did it? Today, come to the end of yourself. Understand that there's only one who saves us. There's only one who fills us with the kind of power that we need to be changed, to be a new creation in Christ, to live differently, to live his way, not our way. It's different than our way. His ways are higher than our ways. He doesn't, he doesn't think or operate the same way that we do but he's willing to show us what his way is if and when we come to the end of ourselves. Would you like to know how to live in him and for him? Would you like the kind of power in your life that lets you have a new beginning, that lets you see things differently, that lets you start over? You can have that today. Pray with me. Just stop what you're doing for a moment and pray with me. Oh God, 
Oh God, I want a new beginning. I want to know you that way. I want my past to be my past and I want my future to be new and with you and in you. I want you to change the way that I think and I need forgiveness for the things that I've done in the past that I have known have been against you that I know are wrong. I'm so sorry. Please forgive me. Please empower me. Change me. Teach me your ways. Fill me with your Holy Spirit so that I can live a new life so that I can live in you and with you and even for you, God. Thank you for waiting for me. Thank you. Thank you for making a way for me to get to you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you've prayed that prayer, you have a new beginning. So now walk in it. Get into the Word of God. Hear what He has to say to you. Get yourself a Bible if you don't have one and start in the New Testament with the book of John. Read God's promises for you. And then get into a church where they are into the Word of God, where they're accountable to one another, where someone can help you to grow in your relationship. We've got a little packet we'd love to send you that will help you. It's called A New Day, and it's absolutely free. You can get this by calling that toll-free number, 1-800-759-0700. Just ask for the New Day packet. It's filled with information from the Word of God, and we've put it together just for you. So call now. You can also log on to CBN.com. Gordon? Well, coming up, he's one of the most popular chefs in the world. And today, Rick Tremonto is bringing his culinary skills to the 700 Club. So don't go away. You know, ever since the Rogers got that Sunsetter awning, they've been unbearable. Why, just because they're always outside having fun on their patio, even in the hottest days? Now you can make the smart move, too, by finding out all about Sunsetter Retractable Awnings. A Sunsetter will turn your patio or deck into an outdoor oasis. You mean you and I could be sitting outside instead of stuck in here with the air conditioning running and all the blinds closed? Just call for a free information kit, and you'll also receive a $200 savings certificate. Look at them. They're having such a great time. A Sunsetter Awning adds value to your house and lets you have so much fun outside. Call now to get your $200 savings certificate. Did you call? I called. Call this number now to receive your free information kit, DVD, and $200 savings certificate. 1-800-668-6694. 1-800-668-6694. John Mapes is 42, mortgage, married, two great kids. He wants to protect his family with a $500,000 term life insurance policy. What do you think it'll cost him? $100 a month? 60? 40? Actually, none of the above. John can get a $500,000 policy from a highly rated insurer for under $25 a month. His secret? Select quote. Select quote is impartial. They'll search the pick of insurers like these to give you a choice of your best prices. SelectQuote has great savings on term life for women, too. John's wife, Carrie, can get a $500,000 policy for under $16 a month. SelectQuote has helped make term life insurance affordable for hundreds of thousands of people since 1985. How about you? Just call this number or visit SelectQuote.com. Call 1-800-590-7491. Welcome back to the 700 Club. Married couples are no longer in the majority. 2010 census numbers show married couples make up only 48% of all U.S. household. It marks the first time in U.S. history that married couples are not in the majority. Experts point to a fast-growing older population that's more likely to be divorced and younger people who now put off marriage until later in life. The Spanish language version of the 700 Club is now breaking into the Hispanic market here in the U.S. Starting in June, Club 700 Oy will be broadcast daily on Inglese. It's the only national Hispanic Christian network here in the U.S. The station can be seen on DirecTV and more than 500 cable and TV stations across the country. In 2010, the U.S. Census counted well over 50 million Hispanics, making up over 16% of our total population. You can find out more about CBN WorldReach by going to cbn.com slash worldreach. 
Gordon and Terry will be back with more of the 700 Club after this. Dear Bowflex, I dropped eight dress sizes, 36 pounds, and all I had to do was walk. This is the Bowflex Tread Climber Machine, the easiest way to walk and burn up to twice the calories in less time. By combining the motion of a treadmill, a stepper, and an elliptical, you get the calorie burning benefits of all three workouts at once. I lost 30 pounds in four months. If I can do it, anyone can do it. Call now for your free DVD and information kit. You'll see how the Tread Climber burns up to twice the calories of a treadmill. Plus, you'll learn how you can own a Tread Climber machine today with special financing for 18 months. Within the first couple of weeks, I started to lose inches. I lost 50 pounds in three months using the Tread Climber. Call or go online to buytc.com for your free info kit. We'll also send you the Bowflex Insider's Guide with a personal fitness assessment to help you jumpstart your Bowflex body today, absolutely free. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Bowflex. Sincerely, J.D. Weber. Well, Rick Tremonto has worked with some of the best chefs in the world and has started some of the greatest restaurants in the country. Not bad for a guy who got his start flipping burgers at a fast food joint. Rick, it's a great honor to have you here. Thank you for this having me. This is wonderful. What a wonderful day. Beautiful day. Beautiful day. Beautiful day. A little awesome hot day. standing next to oh, a grill. That's all right. We'll, get, we'll but, get into it. you know, grilling seems to be this American tradition. Right. We like our, our I guess, our burnt sacrifices. <laughs> uh, it's, it's like, you know, a, a family tradition. You get together. It's all about friends and family. That's right. Why do, we, why do we want to do it? Why do we want to do it outside? You know, it's about the kumbaya. I like to bring my family around the table. I have three boys uh, that are teenage boys that devour food. So, you know, in Chicago, it's always, it's always <laughs> snowing. snowing with the teenage boys. That's right. Get... And it's always snowing in Chicago. So we're mm. the guys that have the grills backed up by the back door in our parkas with the hat on in the blizzard, you know, in January and February. You guys probably don't experience that no, too much here. So, you know, we grill all season. We're not just, really? we're just not the summer warriors. We grill all season long. So we love to grill. It's really simple. I'd love to show you a bunch of stuff. But the, uh, the spirit of the book was really about bringing family together. But who would be a friend of steak? Steak with friends. Well, we're friends of right. steak, but baked potato would be a friend of steak. Mushrooms would be a friend of steak. Olive oil would be a friend of steak. So it kind of had some double entendre. It had some fun with it. You know? Rick's talking about his new book. Uh, it's called Steak and Friends, yep. and it's not just about the friends that you invite over and you want to bring into your barbecue, but it's also what really goes with it and, and, and how to do it, how to cook it, how to pick it, That's right. um, and how to marinate it. Um, some people say no marinade. Some people say you got to marinate. Yeah. You're going to talk about a specific cut of meat today. I am. I'm going to talk about a hanger steak today. We're going to talk about... Where do you about, get a hanger steak? I mean, know, is this you, something you got to go to the airport no, to get? No, not at all. You know, <laughs> the skirt steaks, the hanger steaks, they used to call them the butcher's cut back right. in the day because those the are the cuts that... The butcher would keep no, them private. That's right. A lot of flavor. This is, this is for my family. Inexpensive. All about it. I'm all about the fillets and the tenderloins, but lately, you know... I've, I've never seen one in a grocery store. Really? I've been to the meat you've section seen, a lot. You've seen a skirt steak. I've seen a skirt okay. steak, I've seen London broil. Yep. So the hanger, if you look at a cow belly, you know, it's right next to that. I mean, it's right on that piece. And we're, what we're going to show you, can we, can we sure. go into What we're going to show you is we're going to show you a lot of times they'll come like this, but you'll mm -hmm. see, a lot of times you'll see them already butterflied. You'll see the skirts like this, you'll see the hangers like this. And, it, and there's I, this big piece of sinew right through the middle, and, and you got to get rid of that, right? We're going right? to take that right out. Because you can't eat that, you can't digest it. And you can't all. even grill it out. But you know what I'm going to tell you? And you'll be you, mad at Rick if you try to eat it. you got to have a relationship with your butcher. You have to be able to say, look, I'm Rick, really? I shop here every week, I'm Gordon, I shop here every week. I want to know you, Joey, Billy, Bobby, Susie, and I'm, I want you to tell me what's good, what's, what's fresh. I'm a big seasonal guy. I love to go to farmer's markets. I love to talk to my vendors, my fishmongers. So whatever it is, I think you got to have a relationship with who you're buying the product from, whether it's a farmer or whether how, how it's a grocery you, guy. How do you start that? Because you introduce for, yourself. For, for most people, you, you go say, to the supermarket, you go to that case, everything's wrapped in plastic that's and right. looking pristine. But there's always a and counter. You never, you there's never always see a, a counter with a guy behind it. No, most times there's always a counter with a guy behind it and you walk right up and you shake their hand and you introduce yourself or you ask for somebody is the butcher here is is somebody here that I can talk to about ordering meat or talking about what's fresh and what's seasonal mm -hmm. um, so and, and the key here is if you do this if you take this step to, to get the relationship you're now going to be getting the good stuff 
kind of like God, you know, you get that relationship <laughs> and, and you get the good stuff. We're going to get you. All right, I'm up. getting the good stuff. We're going to get, we're going to get you a towel. We're going to get you a set of tongs. What we've done here is we've taken this hanger. And I'm this, now Rick's apprentice. That's right. That's good. And we've marinated it in some uh -huh. balsamic, some garlic, a little bit of olive oil, salt and pepper. How important is the marinade? Marinade is everything. You're going to infuse flavor in there. I like to use some kind of acid, whether it's mm -hmm. balsamic vinegar, sherry vinegar, lemon, orange. Are you that afraid does, the vinegar is going to cook it? No, that's going to break down some of that sinew that we're talking about. That's going to make this like butter. It's going to just make it just yum. I like so it by butter. You know yeah, me? yeah. We're, you're gonna, you know what? We're going to throw these right on. We're going to get these going. Oh, get a little flare up. Yeah, I don't you like that. Friend is, fire is your friend, as they say, you know? Here's my other thing. Are you a charcoal guy or a gas You know, guy? I'm both, because I grill all season long. I, I'm not gonna go make, I'm also a practical guy. I'm, I, I like to keep it real. I'm not gonna go build a charcoal fire in January when I'm watching the Super Bowl. It's not gonna happen. I wanna <laughs> turn on my gas and make it right there, you know what I mean? So I like both. The other thing is, is I don't like that. You can actually do a combo, can't you? That's right, that's right. Is that what this is? No, this is all gas. This is all gas? All right. We don't want to keep flipping stuff either. We, we like to leave it. So you're not supposed to sit here and mess with it no, and move no, it around. No, let it, let it cook. You're let it get let caramely. You're going to let it get across. Let it get And that yummy. way it doesn't tear Absolutely. when you try to pull it off. And while that's going, I have some broccoli rapini or broccoli rob, some people call it, um, that I've blanched in salt that water. I've never Any seen that in a grocery store. Oh, come on. Any grocery store? Uh, Dominic's, Jewel, Whole Foods. I don't know what you have around Maybe here. Maybe in Wegman. Chicago you can oh, get them. around you, here. You get I've them. never seen that. I've seen it in a restaurant, but I've never seen no, it. No, you blanch really? it in salt water. I grew up in, a, in an Italian family. Where does it we grow? We had it all the time. Huh? Where does it grow? It grows, it grows all over. It grows in the Midwest. It grows in the South. It's beautiful. Just blanched salt water, uh -huh. chili flake, garlic, olive oil. Blanched, we're going to throw it on the grill, and we're going to get a little smoke going on here. We're going to throw That's all this beautiful. on. You know, any kind of greens, I love to grill, whether you're grilling, whether you're grilling rapini, whether you're grilling broccoli, um, I, I love all that. The other now, thing I want a lot of wanna... people think the grill is just for meat. What happens to a vegetable when you grill it? Oh, great flavor, great smoke, you know, uh, great uh, um, um, smokiness, you know? I mean, it just really brings it out. And when you so do... you get that char flavor yeah, working with it? Yeah, you know, it. And, and we grilled up some zucchinis during the, during uh -huh. the break. You know, everybody loves that. Throw a little olive oil on there, marinated in a little salt and pepper. Look at that. That's beautiful, huh? All right. On the steak, how long do you cook it? What well, are you trying to you do? Know, if you're gonna do? If you're going to do medium, medium rare, I like to go three or four minutes per side. Mm -hmm. But if you need to take a peek because you're not sure, take a peek, you know? Look at that. Hot grill, nice and oiled, beautiful marinade. It's not going to stick. Mm -hmm. And you're only, go ahead, you're only going to turn it one time. Beautiful. Look at that. I want to suck a little bit because it was in between. All right. So what I have over here is I have some that are cooked uh -huh. and that I've rested because that's the other right, secret. Now, how, the other secret, the secret for me is resting. How do you, is how how resting. Do you tell when it's done? That's... Give me, give me your hand. Put your All hand right. up. All Here's right. my big secret. Take your other hand. If you go right here, mm -hmm. you feel that? That's medium rare. If you okay. go in towards the yeah. center of your palm, that's medium. medium. Medium well, well done, right there. You and up by the it. knuckle. Well done. Throw it away. <laughs> it's too tough to eat. Good or for not. the dog, not or for not. you. I like mine medium, medium rare. We're gonna go right back over to here. We're gonna take these right off. So that was really quick. About three Man, minutes on each side. That was three minutes, side. and, and uh, that's a fire hot done. grill. We're gonna let those rest for another four or five. We're gonna also, Gordon. I'm gonna have you take those uh, rapini. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna have you just throw them right over on that. Uh, in that tray there. So you don't turn them, you just cook them one side. Yeah, and then just turn them as you go in. Turn them as yep, I go in. Yep, there you go. All it's right. beautiful. Oh, we're getting some char on these. Nice. This is nice. Now remember, they're already cooked. We're just heating them up, and we're just getting some smoke and some char on them. All right. Nice. So we're going to take those, put those right over here. Here's the steaks that we had All rested. Right, now, now yes. before, before you cut. Yeah, yeah. How long have they been resting? They've been resting about four, four to five minutes, and all that juice is going right back in, so when you slice it, they're just gonna be succulent and juicy, and it's not gonna just go all over your board. And so one of the best things to do to preserve the flavor is as soon as it comes off the grill, you put it off and you just let it just sit. Just let it sit while you're making your salad, while you're making something else. The other thing we're gonna do is we're gonna flip our board over because we're gonna cut on the surface, the clean surface, uh -huh. versus a raw surface, yeah? So I'm just going to take these and we're just going to slice them. Nice. 
Now these are medium, medium well. Yeah. I'm gonna grab some medium rare for us because I know you're a medium rare. I'm guy. a medium rare kind of guy. I know you are. <laughs> I know you are. It sort Look of looks that. like fajita meat. It's beautiful. Wait till you taste it. It's gorgeous. You know. All right, so I'm going to make you forks. a plate I'm right here. We got forks, fork. we got plates. I have a beautiful burrata salad here too that I did with roasted beets and a little bit of fresh mozzarella cheese. Now, you, your recipe says burrata. Burrata or and fresh And that's a special cheese. That's a fresh. It's a fresh mozzarella. That cow's has, milk cheese. That's right. I also have a little wild mushroom sauce here that we have, which you can use cremini's, you can use shiitake's. I'm gonna give you the whole lot here, Gordon. I'm, I'm getting a full plate. Man. I'm gonna hook you right up. I hope you guys at home are hungry. Because <laughs> this is really mozzarella. making me hungry. I'm getting, I'm getting the full dish that. here. There you go, my friend. All right, you gotta make one too. I'm not gonna. And then the I other don't thing believe I in have, eating alone. At the end, it's summer. We have beautiful berries, blueberries, strawberries. I have this little easy. Um, uh, strawberry shortcake with the, that we did with some fresh uh, fresh whipped cream and some mint, which are which is beautiful. Nice. I'm just gonna dig right. All right, in. now what goes into that beet salad? Well, we have roasted beets. So you've roasted uh, the the beets in the yeah. oven or on the grill? I roasted them in the oven, oven. and I, I I put them in foil with uh, olive oil, salt, pepper, and I roast them on salt. I put them on a bed of salt, and as I put them in the oven, all the uh, the moisture from the beets are able to absorb in the salt. They don't burn on the bottom when mm -hmm. you when you roast them at about 400. Some walnuts, uh, some sherry vinegar, and some fresh olive oil and salt and pepper. And uh, beets are one of my favorite I'm favorite grab things. Grab one of these steak knives because the proof's always in the taste. That's right. When you and cook at home, you know, are you somebody that? Uh, you know, spends the time wow. and does the marinating and does all that. Oh, I mean, wow. you're somebody that really enjoys that, correct? For me, the technique is everything. And every step has meaning. And the more you understand the steps and what it's trying to do, the marinade is trying to break down the tough fibers to make it um, an inexpensive cut tender. Uh, and how important those steps are. And it wasn't really until I got into French cooking that I understood it. Mm -hmm. And I understood the, the meaning of technique and how important even the simple things of making sure your eggs are at room temperature, uh -huh. how that influences the final dish. Absolutely. And it's just understanding the process that for every one of these steps, there's meaning. Absolutely. All right, you go through that. I mean, I'm, I've read your books. Yeah. And, and you go through that and you really explain from how to pick the right cut at the butcher all the way through room cooking temperature. I and, love room temperature stuff and how to cook it and how to make sure you're going to get the best possible flavor for your for your family. Yeah. We've got a strawberry shortcake. We got to get do. to that. You ready to dig into that? You know, it was very interesting That's when I was. That's been um, calling to me. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. I'm going right. to let you call to that. All Take right. your fork. That steak is wonderful. <laughs> Thank you. All right, this is just a simple shortcake. Just a simple shortcake like recipe. And, and and the recipes are, uh, the, the berries are very interchangeable. You know, oh, it's strawberry wow. season, use strawberries. It's, right. it's blueberry season, use blueberries. They're you know? wrapping me. I'm going to continue eating. For more great <laughs> recipes, too. check out Rick Tremondo's cookbook called Steak with Friends. It's available nationwide. You can also log in to cbn.com. Every recipe you saw here today, you can get. Up next, one sailor runs into the perfect storm. I'm looking up, and I have to tell you, I had never seen conditions like this in my entire life. There's a certain horrible beauty to all this. It was beautiful, but it was killing me. How he made it out of the ocean alive. Next. Hi, I'm Howard Dvorkin, the founder of Consolidated Credit. For almost two decades, Consolidated Credit has helped millions of Americans just like you. We can consolidate and reduce your monthly payments by up to 50%, save you thousands in interest and fees, and help you get out of debt fast. We've helped over 5 million people. Let us help you. Call Consolidated Credit now. 1-800-441-1202. 1-800-441-1202. Hi, I'm Dr. Joyce Brothers. 
Those of us who are independent and live alone shouldn't do so without having emergency protection. And for reliability and peace of mind, I recommend Alert USA. With Alert USA, if you ever need assistance, just press your pendant to be connected to an operator who can summon help to your home 24 hours a day. I've been giving advice for many years, and I believe Alert USA provides the best emergency support and value for your dollar. Call now for a free brochure. For four long days, Dennis Clements was at the mercy of the high seas. The waves tossed his boat up and down, back and forth. But on the fourth day, his ship sank, and Dennis was left bobbing alone in the frigid waters, armed with just a dim flashlight and the prayers of his family, hundreds of miles away. Dennis Clements was ready for an adventure. He's always uh, been an adventurer, uh, wanderlust, big time. That's where his heart is, really, is the adventure. And the more rugged, the better. I wanted a change in my life. I was ready, especially since the death of my mother. I felt kind of numb. I felt like getting away might be good. It might allow me to find times of refreshing. Dennis prepared his 32-foot sailboat in Virginia and set sail for the Bahamas. Two days into his trip, the weather changed. Dennis sailed into a massive storm. Conditions had become quite treacherous. That was the worst storm I'd seen. I had seen other storms. Uh, the problem with this one was is that the wind built and then shifted. Rogue waves struck with incredible force, breaking a hole in the side of the sailboat. I was thrown across the cabin uh, landing on my right shoulder, which I thought I broke at that time. Uh, and I was deluged when the water came pouring in, flooding the boat. I lost all electrical power on board. Uh, the engine would not start. The steering autopilot had failed. It locked up the steering. I was unable to control the boat. To see that hole in the side of the boat and to know that the storm was continuing to build, and the conditions were getting worse. It, it left me totally vulnerable to anything. And I knew then I was really in trouble. Dennis battled the elements for four days. It's getting dark and I'm looking up and I have to tell you, I had never seen conditions like this in my entire life. I remember looking up as, as the boat rolled over in these seas and seeing waves that I was convinced were 50-foot waves. And there's a certain horrible beauty to all this. It was beautiful, but it was killing me. And I looked over and the, and the beacon was on, the light was blinking, and I had not turned it on. And to the best of my knowledge, it was not a self-activating EPIRB. It was a manual deployment. And so I looked at that, and I almost turned it off. And it's like I hear a voice in the back of my mind that says, you didn't turn that on, don't turn it off. I did not want to give up, but it, I started to realize that I wasn't going to make it. The Coast Guard picked up the distress signal and dispatched a C-130 plane over his location. They also called Dennis's wife, Mary. They basically says, yes, we received a distress signal. They says, we know he's off at the coast of uh, North Carolina. If he has a distress signal, if Dennis Clements has a distress signal, this is serious. Friends, family, and local churches began praying for Dennis's safety. Yet for the moment, his situation only got worse. The pilot of the C-130 told Dennis they would not be able to get a helicopter to his location for several hours. I got on the radio and I told him, I said, I don't think I'm gonna last for several hours. And that's when he told me he would drop some life rafts. The rafts missed his position by several hundred yards. As the plane flew away to refuel, an enormous rogue wave capsized his boat. Dennis was thrown into the ocean. When I managed to get back to the surface, there was my sailboat, damaged and halfway flooded. I saw the wind catch in the sail and the boat sailed off and left me there. I had nothing. I tried desperately to catch that boat and it sailed off and left me alone in the dark. 
and I knew that I was going to die there. I said, Lord Jesus, I'm going to trust you until I take my last breath. And that wouldn't be very long. It was only going to be a matter of minutes or at most a few hours before the temperature and the water and the exposure I'd been through. I would just gradually slip into unconsciousness and I would drown. For the first time in my life, I found myself in a situation where I could do nothing. Dennis swam aimlessly in the dark 250 miles from shore. Then, an unexpected jolt. I bumped into a capsized life raft that was floating in the dark with no lights. I bumped into it. I could have swam within 10 feet of this thing and never seen it as I blundered around out there, being tossed on the waves. Within a few hours, a Coast Guard helicopter dropped a rescue diver into the water. He pulled Dennis into the basket, and then he hoisted him into the chopper. He was taken to the USS Eisenhower, where Navy doctors treated him. Amazingly, his body temperature was 98 degrees. I, I had always trusted God to save my soul. Ever since he came, became, you know, Lord of my life, I trusted him to save my soul. But I never really thought he would save my life. Dennis gives thanks to the men and women of the Coast Guard and Navy who performed their jobs with excellence. And he believes he wouldn't be here today if it weren't for the prayers that saved his life. God used that life raft that had been dropped by the Coast Guard and that Navy diver they came down in there and got me. He used those men to save me, but it was God who saved me. I'm counting on him. Because I learned there, I learned there, that everything I did amounted to nothing. Everything I did. And it all came down to me floating alone in the dark. I'm trying to get up every morning and re remind myself that I'm breathing again. I'm still breathing. I'm gonna trust you, Lord Jesus. I'm gonna trust you today. I'm going to trust you today. How about you? Can you trust him today? Can you realize just as Dennis realized? All that you do amounts for nothing. It really does. All that he did amounts to everything. The amazing thing, you know, you look at all the religions of the world, all of them talk about how can you perfect yourself? How can you do enough good things? How can you think the right thoughts? How can you make yourself good enough for God to pay attention to you? Christianity is unique. God comes to you. And he says, I've taken care of all of that. I've taken all your sin away. I've taken everything away so that nothing can separate you from me. Nothing. He's done it all. And all we have to do is trust him. That's all we have to do. And he came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. So all we have to do is trust him. And trust him today. Don't lean on your own understanding. All your ways, acknowledge him. He'll direct you. He'll even put life rafts in your way so you'll bump into them. <laughs> He'll do that for you because he loves you. Now, we're going to pray. Before we pray, we want to encourage you with some other people that have been rescued by God. Here's Annie from San Antonio. She suffered with severe depression. She attempted suicide multiple times. One night when she was thinking about suicide, she was thinking about killing herself. She turned on the television. The 700 Club was on. And then, Terry, you had this word. You have these bouts of terrible depression where you feel like you can't fight your way out of it. Today, that condition is broken over you, and you will not have it anymore. Annie felt the peace of God covering her like a blanket. The depression lifted instantly. Even though there have been some events in her life that could have been a trigger to depression since that time, she hasn't had any trouble at all, Annie says, the Lord has set her free. 
Amen. God is good. That's awesome. God well, is this good. is Mark. He lives in Jackson, Tennessee. He was about to vacuum a room where the 700 Club happened to be on the television set when he heard the Lord tell him to wait a moment. So he did. He waited and he heard you, Gordon, give a word of knowledge. You said, there's a husband and you're praying for a child. Your name is Mark and God is going to give you the child you're asking for. Well, Mark's wife, Megan, previously had a miscarriage. So when Mark heard the words of knowledge, he claimed it. A few minutes later, they found out, or a few months later, they found out that Megan was pregnant with twins. And on July the 8th of 2009, she wow. gave birth to healthy twin boys, Andrew and Gabriel. Thank you for sharing <laughs> that word with us, Mark. That is amazing. I, I didn't know Mark. <laughs> Certainly didn't know he was vacuuming the floor. Didn't know his circumstances, but God did. Hmm. God did. God sent a life raft to Mark, bumped into it while he was vacuuming the floor. What are you doing right now? Can God get your attention? Does he have to send things to you that you bump into? Yeah. Can you just reach out to him in faith, believing, just thinking, if I can just touch the hem of his garment, I'll get everything I need. If I can just get in touch with him. And then realize he's reaching out to you right now. And he's already removed every obstacle. All you have to do is believe in faith and you'll have it. Let's pray. Lord, we just sense now that faith is rising in the audience, and we just ask now for your provision, for your rescue, for your salvation, for your healing. And for those in need, things are overwhelming. The waves just seem to be crashing down all around them. We just know that you're able to turn on that rescue beacon in their lives now. You're able to provide. You're able to heal. You're able to save. You have promised all of this to us. And so we just receive it now. In Jesus' name, we receive the provision that you've already made available. We receive that you provide all our need according to your riches in glory. Terry, God's giving you something right now. There's someone, um, I believe you live down in the Gulf Coast area and you have almost lost your business because of what's happened there with the oil spill lately. God is saying to you, I'm going to redeem this hour in your life, in your business. I'm going to give you new ideas and a whole new perspective. I have a plan and I will redeem what the enemy has tried to rob of you. And so hang in there, hang in there. God's going to show you a clear open door and a clear way. He hears your heart cry and he sees your need. Oh, uh, there's a man named Donald. You're praying for $12,000 and that's the immediate need. Mm -hmm. But God wants to supply over and above that. And he's going to give you a whole new vista. He's opening doors for you to walk through. And so don't be afraid. Don't be afraid of the risk. He's going to take care of the immediate need but he wants to provide for your life. So he's doing it now. Someone else, you have a cauliflower-like growth in your lung. It is not terminal. Your life is gonna be spared. Amen. If you've been touched by God, we wanna share in your good report, so call us, 1-800-759-0700. God bless you, we'll see you again. Here at CBN, we see amazing things happen when we stand together. That's why we want to say thank you to the thousands of you who recently pledged to join the 700 Club. Your monthly gift makes it possible to bring crucial help to those who need it most. You help heal the sick, feed the hungry, and preach the gospel across America and throughout the world. You've brought health and hope to people in desperate need. And changed their lives forever. When Kitty was abandoned by her parents, she went to live with her grandmother in the middle of a garbage dump. They ate scraps of food from the dump and tried not to get bitten by the rats. That's when you built them a new home and set up a small clothing business near the market for Kitty's grandmother. You rescued them from hunger and fear. So please, watch for this mailing and send in your pledge. This year, millions will know the love and saving power of Jesus Christ. And that only happens because you were there.